Hello everyone, Brandon Gasson. I'm the Senior Digital Content Strategist of Gray Magazine, and we are in the Design Lounge with Stuart Horner, Penny Black Design, but also we want to talk a lot about, about this AI design, you know, movement that you've been on. So introduce people who you are and kind of what your background is. I know you were at Nike for a long time before going into interior design and uh, let them know who you are and what you do. Well, nicely introduced. Um, you, you've given it all away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Stuart. I run uh, Penny Black Interiors. We are a um, small, very small currently, um, interior design firm in Portland, Oregon. But over the past, I would say the past year or so, I've kind of wound that business down a little bit and started kind of thinking about how to evolve what we're doing and the way we're going and follow some other pursuits, one of those being AI. Formerly, I was a design director and, and prior to that, designer for Nike Apparel for almost 20 years. And during my time there, I really kind of uh, embedded myself in the innovation side of the business and, and gotcha, certainly yeah. the innovation side of design on this this sort of journey to, you know, sort of discovery of where things are going with this kind of emergence of AI and what we can do with it. Really trying to get an understanding of it. And, and, and I'm on that journey. I'm right at the beginning of it, really. But it seems like you've really jumped into it. Obviously, that, that, that's your background, right? Wanting to innovate. But for people that don't know about it or haven't jumped into it, how would you explain the scope of what AI is when it comes to interior design and furniture design? Yeah. Um, and then kind of like what aspect are you playing with it or how are you utilizing it? I mean, scope is an interesting, <laughs> interesting word because I, th I don't think there's really anything in the right. AI space that is out of scope. You know, yeah. everything I think is being looked at, everything is being considered and all avenues, all industries, all all aspects of kind of the world really are, are going to be affected by the, the advent of AI and what its capabilities are. So for me personally, you know, I, I started off just using it as a tool to explore some visualization of some spaces, you know, okay. um, whether that be kind of, you know, just getting on there and trying to create kind of hotel lobby concepts or retail concepts or, or high conceptual um, interior spaces which was fun and it was it was kind of like a break from my day job you know and, and it was yeah. like oh this is really cool like everybody else you know doing portraits and stuff and and then it was like well maybe you know maybe i can kind of dig into this a little deeper and see if i can start to use it as a design tool instead of as a sort of art creation piece and i think that's where i i've sort of honed in a little okay um over the past few months i would say i'm on this journey I'm, I'm by no means an expert in this so yeah i like many people are just trying to grasp what it is that we can do with this it's very good at kind of like throwing stuff at you that you weren't thinking of but it's 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 a different thing when you're trying to make it generate imagery to help you in the design process talk about that a little bit uh, what you've kind of discovered in that process what are some of the the benefits you've seen but also some of the disconnects like you just touched on. With regards to kind of how I'm beginning to integrate this into my work, at this stage, I would say in terms of kind of the interior design projects that I'm working on, AI is not really any 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 significant component of that. Where it does come in really kind of handy is when you're trying to visualize uh, an, uh, a concept or an approach that you can kind of pull from. Um, okay that's you know that's relatively easy but the, the way i want to use it is i really want to develop more product and start to kind of move towards kind of collaborating on product design and then subsequently being able to introduce that into our project so it kind of gives a little bit more of of um, our own specific personality to those projects because it's using created products rather than products that we're purchasing from from other people, not to say that we won't do both of those things, but yeah. you know, to me, it's a really great way of, you know, applying our signature to, to the work that we do. How far do you think where we are from actually seeing it in create something real, right? Something tangible, right. where it's not just being utilized as, okay, maybe inspiration or to help conceptualize what we may or may not be able to do, but actually it is creating or directing, if you will, what we're actually doing. I guess like that's a really complex question, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's very much at the place right now. And I think most designers, certainly professional designers that are either in product design or, or any form of design architecture or anything, are using it as a tool to help generate ideas and, and a visualization of, of kind of concepts. Okay. But we, I think there's this whole argument, or I don't know if it's an argument or a discussion really around 
artificial intelligence versus artificial um, intellect. And, and they're two quite different things, right? And to, to be a, an intellectual designer is to have kind of reasoning and understanding of, of what you're trying to generate or what you're trying to create. There's these kind of engineering thoughts that you have to go through, this problem solving that you have to kind of understand in order to design. And, you know, intelligent design, which is kind of where we're at currently, is really in the space of it's learning um, things from input and then it's able to apply those learnings to its its imagery. So by no means is AI sitting down and saying, hey, you know, I think we can develop a more functional, you know, wheelchair for the disabled. Let's get together and brainstorm and sit down and kind of come up with some innovative solutions to kind of to help that, right? Mm -hmm. AI is not doing that. That's yeah, absolutely the not. human side. That's the intellectual side of, of, uh, of, of what we do that is is very human and it's very integral into the into the design landscape so i don't see it at certainly in the in the short term being able to do that but i do think i really do think as the interface becomes more adaptable you can kind of you can edit more and the the these kind of intelligent engines start to think more like engineers okay. and start to um understand the, the, the guts and the internal workings and the reasonings for what they're generating, then I think, then you're in kind of game changing territory. And I think that'll probably come much, much quicker than most people anticipate, you know? I mean, with people, we, you know, we're known to not necessarily love the idea or the, or the concept of change, right? What pushback have you seen, maybe not directly, maybe indirectly to the industry, of, of, of utilizing or tapping into the idea of incorporating AI generated design or concepts. I'm sure you've seen in that, the fact that you're in it, seeing both sides and what are yeah. you hearing and, and how do you combat that to people that yeah. are like, okay, well, I don't want to, I don't, I don't think this is removing the art, um, mm -hmm. the art, almost like the art integrity within design. This sort of ownership is, is one of those pieces, right? It's this mm -hmm. whole idea of, you know, well, you know, if, I have a, a Instagram, PMYBLK. Yeah. I post some of my kind of, you know, early um, AI generated furniture concepts on. I get like quite a lot of negative comments, like, well, you didn't do this, AI did this, and, and, and all that kind of discussion, which is valid and understandable. But I do think it's a bit rejective of, you know, the future and, and the way mm -hmm. things are going to be. And I think there's a fear that's being generated around that by, by, certainly a large proportion of the design community starts to kind of worry about like i've spent all these years learning all this software to do all this stuff and now joe blow down the street can just you know make a make an image look like a fully produced product in yeah. five minutes um so i think there's a, there's a fear and overcoming that fear and embracing the opportunity to to um you know get on get on the train of progress and and see where that leads us. Because I think I think in the long term, it can only kind of aid the design community and um, humanity, I suppose, in, in the long run. It's just it's just we're in this gray area of not knowing. And that's what's what's difficult. scary. Yeah, I think there's also a concern that because it's all over the place right now, you're sort of yeah. bombarded with imagery. And a lot of that imagery looks really, really, really well thought out and well planned and well designed and executed when when in the reality is it, it's just a series of words that have been prompted to a to mm -hmm. something that's generated for that so i think there's a i think there's sort of a bit of a fear that yeah. people are dealing with well and i can empathize with that right and a part of it is how it's communicated by people that are creating spaces that mm -hmm. aren't actually in the profession mm -hmm. right because you hear right. someone saying yeah. whether it's like i said whether it's furniture whether it's marketing or branding that creates this book and it's like, oh yeah, this took yeah. me five minutes. Right? Yeah. I created yeah. this piece of furniture. Yeah, that was a thought I had this afternoon. And I just, you know, do, do, yeah. do, do, do. Like someone like yourself or someone in the industry is like, mm -hmm. I've invested 15, 10, five years. I've got trained professionally on this. And now you are creating something essentially within a couple minutes or a couple yeah. of keystrokes, if you will. But you're, but you're not, you're creating a, you're creating a visualization of of that you're not like if you're a furniture designer you're you're not looking at ai and thinking wow that's just designed that chair 
yeah. you're thinking, oh, that's that's a really interesting visual tool that I can use to develop a chair design, right? That's the different perspective. If I could input the the information into the, you know, whatever AI tool I'm, we're using and, and we're to give it a set of reasoning and a set of parameters for the problems that need to be solved. And then it could in turn kind of deliver that to me and show me how to make that, how to produce that, what what kind of issues there might be. As soon as it becomes an engineer, right? Then it's then it's like I said, then it's a game changer. That's that intellectual humanity aspect that you touched on. Yeah. Right. And is that how you see the roles changing? You know what I mean? Whether it's, you know, sooner than later or, or later than sooner. Is that how you see the roles changing of a designer is utilizing this as a tool to engineer and build new things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of, you know, before? I think so. I think AI, you know, is is going to be the problem solver of the future. You know, I read something about um, somebody had said, like, if 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 anything that needs to be done can be compressed to a series of instructions, it will be automated in the future. The same could be said for any kind of design output, really. Um, yeah. But the creativity has to come from the decision to do that. That's where the human aspect comes in. It's like the, the intellectual um, observation or direction that we need to create this thing because of this. Yeah. That, I don't think that can be automated. I think that's always going to be the human input. I think even jumping ahead, I think that is the opportunity and the, the differentiating yourself from everybody else, right? Because if you think of it from the perspective of anyone can create something within a matter of minutes, seconds, whatever, right? It is the input that's going to direct and change the output. Correct. So that puts even a more of a focus on the learning of the understanding of the experience and how we live within the space to create the inputs to direct the outputs that's needed. It's broad right now, right? So any yeah. AI tool is a is a broad scope piece of software or beyond software really, but but it's it's not individualized. If I could take all of my work that I have produced, um, including all of the conceptual work, all of the thinking, all of the written work, all of my thoughts and my process and my approach, and I could kind of build my own personal space within an in, in, within an AI application. Almost a DNA of, of Penny Black. Yeah, yeah, like a DNA of Penny Black. Then it generates based on our own vision of, of what we want to create. And and that's much that's much more interesting, right? That's that then it starts Absolutely. to become personal. With that being said, what what is next for you? I know you've created some furniture designs. How fast are you scaling and moving in that direction? Personally, within your practice, it's not really necessarily something you're doing all the time. It's more conceptualizing, creating ideas. Mm -hmm. But as far as from from production perspective, we've made quite a few pieces of furniture, and, and I found that the biggest opportunity for us is when we can sort of blend the the two work, blend what we've sort of created and the direction we're going with mm -hmm. some new thinking and new concepts, and then we really get like this kind of this idea of this sort of personalized or or individualized or branded, I suppose you could put it, product. We, I would love, we haven't at this point collaborated with anybody, you know, I think that would be the first sort of commercial avenue to take would be to sort of, you know, find the right people that are interested in kind of making something with us and going through the process because it's going to be a very explorative, innovative process. To see the journey of an AI collaborated, developed idea to become a real thing that's really my my focus right now is to is to okay. see that happen and i'm not quite sure how we're going to get there okay but that's that's the first goal is to make something that's currently a, a concept visualized by ai and turn it into something that's that's real and it's and it's been done to a to a, you know to a fair extent already you know yeah. um, philip stark did the first ai chair um quite a while ago now you know so yeah. so that's out there it's just finding the right partners if you were to tell a designer how important it is for them to get in now, right? Sooner mm -hmm. than later. And maybe selfishly, yeah. that fact that you have kind of dove into it, uh -huh. how much of an advantage do you have? Because you are really, you started running the race already where a lot of people are still holding back. Yeah. What what do you see the opportunity within you just diving in and now that you're going to be six months, eight months, yeah. a year or two ahead? You know, we have the early adopters, the innovators, <laughs> then we have the majority and, and, and then the late majority. Yeah, I so, mean, to be truthful, that's, that sort of plays into the fear, really. You know, I think what it is, is old thinking. 
because the 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 way you used to approach design um certainly in terms of kind of professional design is you know you need to learn the software in order to be able to output correctly so that you get the things done correctly so there's a lot of time invested in learning whichever software tool you use for your design discipline right so it's difficult to kind of get yourself out of this mind space that i don't want to get involved with this because there's so much to learn i'm never going to catch up and mm -hmm. and it's just not like that i think anybody could sit down and, and spend you know if you spent like even three or four hours really really like churning out some some ideas and seeing where you can get with it you can get some really some really interesting results that that can you know give you the the uh, the urge to see where you can take it and it sort of becomes a little bit of a challenge really it's like can i make it do what i want to do and i start you know i've started you know drawing drawing things out the way i want them to be and and seeing if i can get ai to generate anything close to what i conceptualized on paper and that's okay. an interesting exercise to do you know it's all about kind of learning how to prompt and how to speak to it i i, I have this thing where i i say kind of um explain it train it and tame it okay and that's that's how i treat it right you you have to you have to explain what it is you want to see in, in grammatically correctly for it to understand and then you have to iterate with it you have to train it to to understand what it is you're saying because it's, it's not going to be right the first time and then it kind of throws a lot of stuff at you you're just like whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, oh, <laughs> hold up <laughs> you know right then slow you, down then you tame it and you you get it back to kind of where you want it to be and then you've got a nice place that isn't sort of super fantastical i mean it's great fun for like super fantastical like artwork and stuff for people to play with like hours of fun if you want to use it as a tool to create something real um you, you've got to explain it train it and tame it love it love it well i'm excited i'm excited to follow the journey to see when that actual product whatever that ends up being uh comes up i'm sure i'll be seeing it either through social or some other aspects so uh yeah you have to keep let us know keep us posted I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch hopefully hopefully uh we'll see something you know in the not too distant future unfortunately kind of manufacturing is not quite as quick as uh, ai development at the moment so right you gotta, gotta get it uh, caught up